the Joe Rogan experience. Do you uh, ever conceive of a possibility of coming up with something that removes carbon from the atmosphere? That's a giant issue with us, right? Right. Um, carbon emissions. So definitely, I, I believe negative emissions, I think you, you, you refer to them, uh, will be required to make the, the goals to kind of keep the you know, warming in, in, in check. Um, it's, however, it's a much more difficult problem because if you think of the ocean, it's, it's basically a two-dimensional problem. It's a plastic on the surface, and fortunately, it's not even the whole ocean. It's, it's kind of concentrating in these accumulation zones. So the garbage patch, although it's twice the size of Texas, it's still you know, 1.6 million square kilometers, while the ocean is like 300 million square kilometers to my head. So it's really just maybe less than a percent of the ocean which needs to be cleaned. And it's a, again, it's a two-dimensional problem. Well, the atmosphere is, is three-dimensional. So it's just this, this one-dimensional increase is just yeah it's just a, a huge huge challenge so I, I do think it needs to be tackled and it's definitely an exciting problem to think about um I, I i do think that's definitely that's not a good starter problem to to work on no um wasn't there something jamie that we had talked about where they had figured out a way to make these building sized essentially vacuum cleaners they were going to put in the center of uh certain cities i believe it was in asia Maybe perhaps hmm. China, they'd come up with this. And the, I don't know if they implemented it yet, but the idea was to have these enormous things in place that look like a skyscraper. Hmm. And really, it was just a, a huge vacuum cleaner for carbon. Sure. I know there are a few companies that work on it. I believe Carbon Engineering is one. There is also, um, there's also one out of Switzerland. I forgot the name. But uh, so, so definitely good, smart people are, are working on that problem. Um, I'm not sure where they are in terms of Know, the economics and scale. This right here. When he mentions garbage en engineering, is this one? Okay, so the that Bill looks Gates like fun fit. giant fans, like a huge building filled with fans. Yeah. <laughs> we believe humanity can solve climate change. Yikes! Imagine like we have filters for air, the same way we have filters for water. Direct air capture technology, carbon engineering. Um, more than 10 years in the making that can capture carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere. And look at that machine. Try to get a close-up on what that thing looks like. It looks like giant fucking washing machines, <laughs> right? Like it's washing the air. Doesn't it look like giant washing yeah. machines? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's feasible. It doesn't seem like it's something that's impossible. Yeah. But it's, it, I think just it's, it's the scalability that, that's the main right. challenge. Mainly. Well, it's also funding. Like if you drive over uh, or fly over Manhattan, rather, and see the density of the structures and how many buildings are in there, you know that people can make some pretty insane shit. Right. Why couldn't they make some giant, insane vacuum cleaner for the air that's you yeah. know as big as a city block? Of course, a lot of it comes down to economics. Mm -hmm. our, our system is not very good at valuing things that are long-term right. or directly benefit ourselves. Um so, so, so definitely, people tax it. They'll find, they'll find a way to make it profitable. Is this another one? Rendering of what one would look like to capture one million tons of CO two per year. Whoa! Uh, sounds like it looks like it'd be noisy. Oh yeah, probably <laughs> annoying as fuck. Look at those fans. <laughs> it's so weird though. Like the whole array of fans. Like okay, okay, that seems like a way to do it. Looks like somebody built a giant computer and trying to cool it or something. And then they'll have all this carbon. What the fuck do they do with that? Burn it? What do they do? Yeah, I don't know. What do you, you make shit out of it? Uh, what do you do? Make diamonds? Imagine that. <laughs> diamonds are a girl's best friend. You make it out of the carbon that you pull out of the air. That'd be a good business model. Right? That would be a great business yeah. model. This would be like a green diamond, right? A diamond that's actually made, and it's all pressured by solar power. They use solar power to fucking smash it. Carbon Slave fiber, free. too. Yeah. Is that the same carbon fiber? I don't know. Is it the same shit? Yeah, why not, right? It must be. It's yeah. carbon, okay. right? right? So carbon is how they make di – it's coal, right, but which is essentially carbon, right? Do they make diamonds from carbon or do they make diamonds just from coal? What is coal? Coal's like burnt shit, right? There's many, many forms in which carbon – exists yeah so i know they crystal are structures they are doing that now where they are making um commercially made diamonds diamonds are made of carbon so they form as carbon atoms under a high temperature and, pre and pressure they bond together to start growing crystals that's why a diamond is such a hard material because you have each carbon atom participating in four of these very strong covalent 
bonds that form between carbon atoms. I've never word that, read that word out loud. Covalent. Have you ever Co read that word out loud? Co covalent, I believe. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I've never even seen that word. Uh, so these bonds that form between carbon atoms. So I know they're doing that now. They, they're, they're making diamonds with certain machines. High pressure, high yeah. heat. Yeah. If they did, that would be... That would be hilarious. That would be a good thing, too, because they would put a dent in the actual diamond market, which is this weird lockdown fucking strange market. Because diamonds aren't nearly as valuable as they're set out to be. De Beers takes these diamonds and they stockpile them and they only release a certain amount of them and they keep the price very high. Huh. But it's all engineered. Right. Like the profit, like diamonds used to be far more rare than they are now. But hmm. with uh, the innovation in mining technology and their ability to get to diamonds they couldn't get to before. They have a lot of diamonds. Like sure. it's, it's not as valuable as it appears when you go to buy one. Okay. Well, didn't know that. So we can make carbon diamonds, bro. And actually, plastic, again, it's just Makes carbon diamonds? chains. Oh, that's so right. Yeah, we could even make <gasps> diamonds out of ocean plastic. Whoa, that would be the ultimate green diamond. Imagine like if you're like a really um, ecologically minded rapper, you wear all, all your ice could come from the ocean. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know. From trash to treasure. Yes. They, dude, that's the fucking, that's that's the signature of the company. In quotes, from trash to treasure. You should definitely write these things down. Boy and diamonds. How about that? I like it. Yeah. Dude, you could be the first uh, guy to do this. Here we go. A plastic, this is an ocean diamond. Whoa. Earth is crushing the ocean into salty diamonds. That's a dope looking diamond, mm -hmm. too. What is that? Is this salt, I guess. Uh, recreated salty diamond deposits in a high-pressure, high-temperature experiment suggesting that many of Earth's diamonds form when the mantle crushes ancient seabed minerals. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't science and the Earth cool? <laughs> <laughs>